Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Esteban Norio. Do I look at the camera at all or no? You can look wherever you want. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Esteban Norio and born and raised in L.A. And um, only I've been here about 56 years now. So, you know, I'm putting in a little time over here in beautiful Los Angeles. <laughs> He's got a few few years packed in to this, uh, to this city. I guess we haven't been live for a couple of weeks, right? In the wake of uh, events that have happened, and uh, it's all been a blur. Crazy! I brought I brought uh, Stellan on because. He's a friend of the brand and a friend of Spanto's. And, uh, well, this is a lot harder to talk about than I thought it would be. I thought I was going to roll right through this. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a trip. This whole thing is crazy. And the crazy thing about it is that everything keeps moving. Like, you know, if someone passes away, you would like to just uh, take some time and stop time and just kind of chill out for a minute and let everything roll over. But you really don't have that option. You got to get up and go to work and do things, and uh, that's the way it goes. So here we are. We're back to work. Powerful Truth Angels, episode 4097. Return guest. The last time you were here was the barbecue in, in uh, Silkworm's garage, in, uh, in his backyard, Silkworm's backyard. Yeah. Right? We had El Russo. It's fire. I've never had it taste as good as it did in that backyard. No offense to anybody, but it was so good in the yard. Ricky, am I wrong? Was El Russo the best in Darius's backyard? That was the best I ever had it. I've had it since. The little rib tip things? Oh, my God. Um, we're at the Born and Raised office currently, and uh, we would give you guys a studio tour, but at the moment, um, we're not fully built out yet because, again, we got to the office this year, and we hit the ground running, and we've been going nonstop, and we've been piecing it together. This corner is kind of built out. We got a, we got a Street Fighter two, and I will say that, you know, there's only one person in the office that could beat me on this game. And that person is no longer with us. So now I am the king of Street Fighter 2. It's the only benefit to this situation is that now I'm the master of this game. Because he mercilessly beat me every time I played him. And I couldn't believe how good he was. But the guy spent a lot of time uh, in liquor stores, playing video games, probably while he was doing other things at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he really was out there. I mean, they, they, I can't believe he sat down long enough to get good at that. Yeah, really good. Like, man, yeah, the, the way he was, just all, always on the move, you know? Always on the move. He walked through here like a fucking whirlwind, do six laps before he even knew he was here. Running around, pacing, talking. The energy, out of control. A true maniac. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's like me with the phone. Like, I can't sit there and talk on the phone. I have to walk. Yeah. And as as far as I can go, I'll go that far and come right back. And that's that's how he was. I'd trip out and be like, man, this is, he does that shit just like I do. The pace and talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the hands going everywhere. Yeah. The hands going over the place. And he's catching tags while he talks. He's got it. He's never, I've never seen the guy ever wear a fucking earpiece. <laughs> never in the history of this guy has he ever put a little thing in his ear. Um, you know, AirPods, fucking uh, wire headphones, never. Have you ever seen him do that? No, he was the the. Uh, he just the FaceTime it. shit. Yeah, FaceTime. I used to hate that man. You hate FaceTime. Huh? I hate FaceTime because everybody walks like this and they're like talking, and you know, being a camera guy and all that, the worst thing you could do is look under like the neck, under somebody's chin. It's yeah, like the worst angle ever. Yeah, and that's the angle he'd always have. So I'm always looking up his chin or his nose or. And then, you know, I don't want to see myself on the camera, you know? So right. I would hate just hang up on him and then call him back. Like, hey, what's up, homie? He's like, why don't you answer your face? I don't like that shit. Yeah. He's, it's it's he generational. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind FaceTime here and there. I like it. I like to, I like to see what people are doing sometimes. <laughs> really? You don't think it's generational? So... You know, I think the I think that the first I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the first time we all worked together, and I remember this clearly was when I shot the the very first Born and Raised film in Venice at uh, at Ricky Massey's house with his kids in the bathtub, and you yeah. were shooting stills, yep. right? Yeah. And that day was 
to be honest, at that at that point in time, I had only agreed to shoot a film for Born and Raised. I wasn't going to be on board yet. And I had convinced Sponto, I go, listen, we got to make a movie. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, we have to make a film. And I don't think people were making films for product 10 years ago and definitely not like that. Not to put a feather in anyone's hat, but we were the first to do it in that manner, I believe. But uh, we shot that film. It was fucking one of those days on set where it was just like magic was happening. The hair standing up my arms, goosebumps, like. I heard you talking uh, uh, about the about like the scene where someone's getting hopped in, where he jumped in yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah. And it was rain. We were all bummed out because it was rainy, but the rain made it even spookier. Yeah, it made it cooler. Yeah, it made it cooler. And his dad, you know, also rest in peace, Butch. His dad showed up, and we made that song like on the spot. Like Butch and I wrote it right there in the room. Like his mom made fry bread. His too, mom made fry bread. We shot that also. Yep. If you guys go and watch, if you go to bornandraised.com and you go to the video section, the very first video, it's black and white. You see his dad there as the cover page. And you can see that whole day unfold. And uh, Stevan shot stills there. And, like, I think that for Sponto, I mean, you guys, you guys had just met back then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well, you, that, you had crossed paths. Yeah, we met. And then, um, you know, it came to the point where he asked me, like, hey, I want to do this project. You know, are you down? And. We talked a little bit about what what it was going to be like that day, and then um, you know it was kind of like uh, you know he told me everything it was going to be to get me interested, and I was like, yeah, that that sounds cool, you know for sure. And uh, I, I went down there, and we did double what he said it was going to be. So it was like there was like maybe five or six scenarios he told me what it was. It ended up being at least double that you know these yeah. 12 yeah guys shaping surfboards yeah uh, other guys you know the there was the kids in the bathtub because uh, you know like when there's a uh, drive-by shootings and stuff the bullets couldn't go through a bathtub so that was like a place where people would you know put the kids when there was like um situations like that going on so you know there was a lot of different things and then he wanted to have this part where um Somebody gets jumped into the neighborhood and the guy didn't show up for some reason. So then he got, he said, well, I'll do it. I'll be the guy. So he got jumped by like three or four guys. And uh, it was it was pretty cool because, you know, like I said, it was in the rain. It was in the alley behind his house. And he had just done that Venice uh, block letters behind his house and did like a roll call back there. It was just Everything was cool about that day. It was fun, and I painted those letters. It wasn't even like work, you know. No, it was crazy. You know what's crazy too is everyone had a ski mask on because they were still an injunction back then. Yeah. So they couldn't, you know, the ski mask added extra elements to it, but it was because they couldn't be seen on camera. Together. Yeah. So, I mean, it was crazy. It was also like so much has changed in those obviously in those ten years in that decade because that element was still alive more back then. It's still alive, obviously, but it's been getting watered down as we, you know, as we get more and more into the future. And you know, gangbanging is happening in, in in artificial intelligence at this point, right, Jason? Yeah, Geiki was there too that day, and Geiki, rest in oh, peace, yeah, yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah. So it's like, you know, in those ten years, a lot of people passed away. A lot of people. It's a you know. A lot of his friends. It's a normal like L.A. thing, but not nowhere else, you know. No. And a lot of guys that we shot in a lot of those films are dead. Uh, you know, just just part of the deal. Like you just he, we, there'd be some dude. Oh, so and so got got killed. It's like casually happened all the time. You know, because shit's dangerous. Um, but he, um, the thing about him, and I thought about this the other morning, yesterday when I went to go shoot at Legion Park for this drop, uh, is that he really, this guy really spent. Four, four or five years in the hospital, fighting, sick. I mean, you shot him there too. You yeah, shot him in that him. mesh thing on his head. Yeah, I shot him in the, the MRI, right? The MRI, MRI and in the his room. In his room that he had um, all these all those posters, posters up, up in yeah. the room. That was pretty cool. Like, yeah, they let him decorate the room. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were pulling up in there. Like, I pull up with the laptop, have meetings. We're still, we're like, let's go, let's keep going. Like, whatever. <laughs> We're still fucking going back then. He was on death's door. 
And the crazy thing is like, the two things I feel I remember is that one is he was so, he was really good with people and he had the whole fucking staff, like they all loved him. He talked to every nurse. He get into your shit, like where where did you grow up? What high school did you go to? He started, he like, oh, you know, so it's like, yeah, there was yeah, new yeah. somebody, knew somebody, you know, like those are his people, uh, you know, nurses and you know people that work in that in that kind of level of industry, like the people that we grew up with, like that's kind of the neighborhood, right? You end up a lot of people end up being nurses or something else. A lot of people don't end up in the arts, so to speak. So, and those are his people, and he, you know, and he interacted with all of them, and he uh, he took care of them, they took care of him. Because he lived in the hospital, man. The yeah. guy lived in the fucking hospital for years. He was there every day. He'd come out. He'd go back in. I mean, it was terrible. I watched him go through that, and I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I was like, and I tell him, like, I don't think I could do it if I was, like, if it was me, I don't know if I had the, the stamina for this because it was wild. Yeah. I, I, I just drove by there yesterday. Yeah. And I was like, hey, there's a hospital where, where Sponto was when he had cancer. And, um. Yeah, it just took me right back to those days and just seeing in the the hallways are empty and yeah. He was like, "Hey, you want to do some photos?" Like, yeah, and we went out in the hallway and did some photos out there in the hallways. Yeah, nobody out there. It was a crazy time. And he, it's interesting too because he was so vain. Like he would get so mad if you put up the wrong picture of him. He'd be like, I look like shit. Yeah. But he still let himself be shot in that in all of those conditions he was in too. Yeah. Like a, you know what I mean? Like he'd be crazy yeah. if, it, if one hair was out of place. He was like freaking out. But yeah. <laughs> he let he let you shoot him on death's door too. You know. I seen him the other in the at the service. <laughs> There's one picture where he's like on the uh, bench press. Yeah. And his hair is just out of control. Oh, it looked okay. like. Like that was the first ten minutes of the day when he woke up. Yeah, he looked crazy. I'm like, crazy. I can't believe he let somebody take that picture. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't having it, man. Um, you know, and and you've been, I mean, it's crazy. You've been with us from day one, basically. Yeah, you know, like you were there day one. You've been part of this brand, and uh, you know, I you don't pay attention to these things as they happen because. Life goes fast and we're doing yeah. a million things and we got a million things going on and like Sponto and I are fucking, you know, joined at the hip and we're fucking either yelling at each other or hugging each other, whatever the fuck it is, but it's always something and the years flip, flip by and you've been here the whole time. Yeah. And you guys have been super tight. Yeah. You know, like he, he knew he could always count on you and vice versa. I mean, that's the yeah. thing, right? Like. Yeah, he'd guys, get me good. Yeah. He'd tell me, hey, I got to do the shoot. When? Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What, what time? Seven in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Fuck. Like, like the guy in his fucking hours, man. So I'm thinking, like, if I show up there at seven, I'll be done by, like, oh, we're going seven to seven, yeah. you know? Yeah. At least 12 hours. The sunrise, the sunset, yeah. and as many things we could do. He's like, Are you, you got it? You got it? I got it. Let's keep going, you know? Like, if I'm if I put a day aside to shoot, like just run me to the ground, you know. Yeah. Like that's what I like. Yeah. That shit is fun. I love what I do, so it's no problem for me. I mean, maybe today in the 108 degree weather Oof. out there, I probably you know complain a little bit, but other than that, I fucking love this shit, you know. I mean, it just got hot like this past two weeks. Yeah. This whole fucking year is nothing's going on, and then now it gets hot. Now we have summertime. It's like. What are we in? Or late July, mid July? Yeah. It finally gets hot for the first time. Some bullshit. Um. So yeah, I mean that you know. Again, it goes really fast when you're when you're focusing on one task, and trying to make something. The time goes so fast, and people. I mean, you've done you've you've been involved with multiple companies. Yeah. You know, still are, and you know how it goes. Like you start trying to build some shit. And you're focused on that thing every day, and the, and the time, like the calendar flips, like in the you know, yeah, like you see in the cartoons or in in, in a montage, it just goes boom, 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 yeah. And that ten years goes by. I don't feel ten years older at all, but I am. I'm a decade older, and uh, that's a lot of time, man. Yeah, you look younger though than you. I've been I've been reverse aging. <laughs> I trip out. I was watching uh, the Vice thing. I think it was. Oh God, don't and talk about you yeah. and uh, Maddie, Maddie walking yeah. around. Yeah. I'm like, damn! Look at two tone right there. Like, he looks younger now. You know, oh, I was a mess back then. You shed shed a couple of pounds, and that shit takes years off your life. Years off, yeah. I mean, that that was also like that period too. Was 
you know, that period of time was terrible because I didn't know how to, like, I'm sober for seven point something years. But, you know, in the beginning of the brand, I relapsed because I, I didn't know how to handle, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was working too much and he got sick and I'd never been around someone that was sick that was a partner. I didn't know how to handle it and I fucked up. Yeah. I relapsed and then, and then, then I, I got sober, but then I got really out of shape too because I just couldn't like, I could, wasn't taking care of myself and I wasn't doing my routines and I was a mess. And like, I felt like I started getting sick next to him while he was really sick because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. It's like really a, a weird thing being like, you know, because I, I stayed in the business, you know, like I, I made a decision to stay. Yeah. And I stayed and I paid, a, I paid a pretty price for that personally. I paid a lot uh, because of that decision. Not it's only it's only my fault. You know, that, that, that's how I dealt with it, but that's how I dealt with it. I, I couldn't take care of myself. I became a mess. So now, now I'm like, you know, after seeing him be sick, I'm like, there's no reason to not take care of yourself. Like, you know, you have a sauna. Yeah. You got the ice. Every day. Right? I got the sauna at the crib. Yeah. And then when I first bought it, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Who am I? Yeah. As soon as I got in that thing, I was like, fuck this. Who cares? Yeah. Try to get my 20 minutes in, you know? Yeah. It's the best because like, Health is wealth, you know, like you see that shit. Like that dude was on death's door for five years. Yeah. And that scared the shit out of me. And then I became un unhealthy and that scared me too. And I'm like, I feel like I got to do this for Like I got to be healthy before anything else. That's where my head's at. But because all this shit is like, it's pointless. Yeah. If you're sick. Oh yeah. You can't, well, you can't uh, function, you know, at your, at your best or at your fullest. Like, and that makes you think like, um, he was doing that from the hospital bed. I know for for five years. Yeah. So imagine yeah, where you guys would be if he if that never happened. Like, no, I know. I mean, all the shit that he got done. I know. Like weekly drops and all this craziness shit. Like I can only imagine where it would be right now if he hadn't got that sick. Cause we would be like years ahead of where we're at. We're not doing bad, but no, you're. We lost five years. Yeah. We're working at like half capacity. You know, half capacity, but double what everybody else was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It still was like, yeah, yeah. yeah that, we still I mean, were psychotic. There's about still it. people, the, you, him, uh, him in the hospital, and they're standing still. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. it's like, they're not doing shit. You know, like, man, this fool is doing double, triple what regular people are doing from a hospital bed with terminal cancer. Yeah. It's true. He has, a crazy energy like you never saw that dude like i'm known to in the office midday take a like, nap guess what i'm taking a nap <laughs> fuck off i'm doing 20 minutes on the couch son. just leave <laughs> me alone crazy. that dude like the only time i saw him down was when he was like so sick he couldn't move but yeah any, any other time like he's wound up yeah like i used to be imagine like god imagine that dude's on your head like, imagine he's focused on you and he's coming after you. Yeah, yeah. He's never going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's relentless. Yeah. Because the way he came after everything else was, was fucking psychotic. Yeah. He, you know, he'll hit you. He would hit you on a, on a 11 o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah. Just start talking about work. You're like, bro, tomorrow. Yeah. Wait, give me tomorrow. Like, <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> I'm like, bro, no, no, no. Just give me a break. Like, you know, we all went through it. Yeah, I love obsessed. it. Obsessed. He was obsessed. Um. Hold on one second. Give me one second. Go for it. Wait, what are you talking about? Am I cool? Because I was thinking like we we were there in we we're at Walmart pitching a. Are you live? Are we hot? Yeah. Yeah. So we we're at Walmart pitching like a sub brand because we we're like, do we want to keep struggling? In the Joker being, days. Yeah. Yeah. Do we want to keep struggling and being this like cool guy? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And like always fighting for our place in the cool world, the relevant world. Yes. Or do we want to say, well, we could, or do we want to say, fuck it and let's go to Walmart yeah. and, and, <laughs> yeah, get, and yeah, get a yeah, check, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So at that point in our life, we were like, fuck it, we, let's go to Walmart and get the check, but we'll do it under like a sub brand yep. that nobody knows about yep. and we'll keep doing our cool guy shit. Yeah. So we had the best of both worlds. Yeah. When I got there and I saw like the 50 rooms of people, pitching their shit yeah. i was thinking like 
I was like, fuck, man, is there, do I not get it? Am I, maybe I'm not as cool as I think I am, or maybe cool guys don't get it, what, what the regular people are getting. Yes. You know, like maybe we're not understanding yes. what is really going on. Yeah. And they're all on a different level. Bro, normal people are out there wearing a fish with like a, wearing a shirt with like a, a trout on it with a baseball hat that says like cool vibes or some shit. Right. There's no subculture. It's just like, yeah, or they're, they're wearing like a surf brand. They don't surf. They're from the Midwest. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. They're never yeah. going to go on a surfboard in their life, no. and they don't care to. They're, and men in general are fucking don't know, can't figure anything out. Like the general public of men in America, they don't they don't know what to do. They don't know how to dress themselves. They don't know what to wear. Yeah, look at Jason. Like, you know, it's like you know what I mean. So it's yeah. just too. It's it's a crazy. Like we're in a we're a Super, yeah tiny little, tiny yeah. tiny tiny microcosm and that shit had me questioning my, myself i'm like maybe am i cool or no yeah. like what the fuck is it <laughs> am i cool yeah like because i i thought i'm a cool guy i got yeah. a lowrider i got a harley yeah. you know I, I i wear the you know cool guy clothes you yeah. know the cool brands i know all the cool people yeah but then i'm thinking like maybe we are just little community maybe we're just so far out of it yeah we don't get it yeah and we're not getting what they what they know yeah so i just would like you know question yourself and fuck with yourself you know say like, like the version of you in their world is like guy fieri yeah that's the that's the that's the, that's the esteban of like middle america right like he's cool on a bigger scale they think he's sick. He's got bleach hair. He wears his glasses behind his head. He'll sell you a fucking hot pocket. He doesn't give a fuck. And that and listen, man. Like in the words of Pat Tenori, "Core is poor." He told us that a million times. We're born and raised. We go talk to him. He'd be like, "Core is poor, you guys." And we'd be like, "Huh?" And we're okay, whatever that means. Hey, what what kind of sense? Because I'm gonna say that shit to him right now when I get there. Core is poor. Yeah, yeah. But how would he say it so I could like? It, what would he be talking about? We'd so be it, talking about like, okay, it'd be like this. He'd be like, what? He would be telling us, like, you should go into, like, this store. And we're like, we don't want to go in that store. That store is lame. Yeah. Core is poor. Because you're being, if you're being hardcore and, like, core to your shit, yeah. you're poor. Yeah. You're being, if you're sticking to your guns yeah. in a business and not selling, quote, unquote, selling out, then you're poor. Yeah. Now, somehow, we haven't sold out. And we stuck to our guns. And we're and doing okay. Rich. Yeah. We're not rich, but we're doing good. But... Look at Pat. <laughs> Pat. Pat's actually a rich person. Not to put you on, on front street, but I'm not out here building a fucking two acre compound in the middle of Newport. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> have you seen it from the have you seen the satellite version of, the I, satellite vision of it? No. I've only <laughs> seen I saw when he was you know that you know he's the type of dude that will build some shit and be like, Nah, tear it down. Let's do it again. He just did that to me. He right? Yesterday. He does that shit. Yeah, yesterday he had me putting up 60 photos on the wall and I still have 40 on the floor and he goes what do you think and I go it's cool we're doing good he goes it looks like kind of like like a gallery like it's laid out for a gallery you know you have those six like dead homies with the white frames there you have the black horizontal frames of all low riding and then like it's it's real like structured like in a gallery and I go yeah he goes yeah I don't know man um you like it? And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. You know, like, <laughs> you know where that's a, going. Uh, yeah, I know, <laughs> like I, I know it's coming. Yeah. In the whole gallery, he painted it all white and made it all brand new. But my walls, he left it how it was. It was it's an old Sears mechanic building, so it says like Die Hard on the wall in like white letters, and then everything else is black. So, but it, and my walls are all fucking hammered into like there's holes in the wall and shit like that. Everybody else's wall is like perfectly sanded and painted white. Yeah. So he was like, um, I, it's a little bit too stiff for me. And I don't know if I like the black walls. I think we should paint everything white. And I go, yeah. All right, fuck it. Let's do it. Goes, <laughs> but you know, the show's in three days and we're going to have to sand everything prep it you know spackle it or whatever and sand it again and then you know paint it and we won't have time and i go well, fuck it let's not do it then he goes are you sure though like you don't you don't think it look better white i go yeah yeah i think it look better white you know nice and clean but you know if you say we don't got time we don't have time he goes, no we don't have time he goes so you don't want it white and i go 
I'm saying <laughs> if we can do it white and we have time, let's do it white. If we don't have time and fuck it, let's do it black. Goes, okay, cool. If we take all those pictures down and we salon style it, just put them nuts to butts, you won't be able to see what's in the background. Okay, yeah, cool, let's do that. He goes, okay, yeah, let's do it. I take all fucking 60 pictures off the wall. The guy that's hanging them, Willie and them are just like, you know, like. Fuck. Because, you know, like, hanging pictures nuts to butts is a whole nother level. Like, it's fucking the like. The math on the that. The math is just crazy. Dude. You got to do some. You don't have to, but, you know, if you, you need something to help you focus. They Adderall use, oh or some God. type of shit. Because that shit is so tedious and, like, it's it's painful watching it. Like, I feel so bad for the poor guys hanging the artwork. I'm just like, fuck, man. I did that in the crib. I set up a whole wall full of shit, and it, it took it was so it took so much energy that I haven't done anything since. It was so exhausting to do it because I had yeah. to like you have to a lot you know for those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about. There's a there's a picture and there's the hanging wire, and when you put the hanging wire on the nail, it sags. So you have to adjust for that sag, for that sag upwards and the wire, and that sag upwards is is connected to the there's a measurement from that to the top of the frame and so there's all this math it's yeah. not rocket science but it's not easy and you fuck it up and you always fuck it up by an inch or something something's yeah, yeah. always off and and it's a mess and yeah. in the gallery you can't have a bunch of fucking holes and all that weird shit you know yeah. like it's got to be pristine so that stuff does my head that kind of nitpicky meticulous bullshit that does my head in yeah that's not how i operate and same <laughs> with the, same with our boy he would he would never, and I think if you put, if you had his family held ransom and you said, go hang these, <laughs> go hang these 20 pictures perfectly, they would be all dead. There's just no way. <laughs> There's no fucking way. Because it takes like this like little, it's a different brain. Yeah. You know? And like, yeah. it's not the fucking run, run, go brain. It's like yeah. the meticulous little like beep, 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 that, yeah. that kind of, you know, that little nitpicky shit that I can't do. Yeah, me neither. It's like, this, yeah. Pat told us, hey. Yeah, let's take everything down and, and start over. <laughs> so fuck. I was like, fuck it. Let's do it. So that's what we've been doing for the past two days. After this, I'm going to run down there and help finish, you know. But I, I got a, another hanger. So, you, you know, I've had those two hangers. guys doing like 100 different artists. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to bring in my own just for me. Yeah. And just powerhouse through this shit because we have over 100 photos. I can't. I you know that wait. kid, Alex? He's a sign painter. You probably you probably met him down there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's uh he told me that Pat saw a um saw an alligator in the sewer. Did you hear about this? No. There's a video. No. He's, yeah. <laughs> Look, on. I gotta show this. No, he said that Pat maybe maybe Pat had been up for too many days, but I gotta show you this video. <laughs> he said great. that Pat there's a sewer grate in that building, and Pat said there's an alligator, and he's trying to square up with it. Watch, I'll show you. It's it's very. I mean, Pat. That's Pat a is, monster. He's a monster. Like I I saw the video of him on uh, on known gallery, <laughs> right? Because yeah. they're they're doing a play by play here. Look at this. Oh my god. Look, he's squaring up with a hole in the ground. Oh, there's that. The sewer. That's the sewer. He swears there's an alligator in the sewer. Which here's the thing with Pat, it might be. Yeah. There might be one down there. I yeah. believe I don't. I wouldn't put anything past him. Find, yeah. Him being the guy to find an alligator in the yeah. sewer because the yeah. guy's like, his life is is crazy. If you think about how he lives his life, yeah. And up until very recently, he had an office that he built, and you go there to visit him, and he'd be like, "Dude, dude, come here, dude, come here." And it'd be like, check, check this out, meet this guy. And you meet some guy, whatever, he's a fighter, he's an, a, a, an artist or something. Yeah. And they, let's go, let's go get, um, let's go psych our donuts. Like, All right, Pat, let's get, let's get uh, Korean barbecue. Okay, okay, check it out. Let's go get, let's get in the sauna. So then you're in the sauna yeah. and you're like <laughs> sick, you're sweaty. It's like, do you want to work out? Should we work out? Let's, tuton, put on a key. You know what? Tuton, I got there one day. He goes, Tuton, I want you to, I want you to like, I want you to put on a glove and we're going to wrestle and just keep trying to hit me in the face. Yeah. And, <laughs> And you could, and I can haul off and try to hit him as hard as I can. Nothing's going to happen because yeah. he's like, he's also like a deadly, he's like yeah. a human weapon. Yeah, he's like 20 a black years belt. black belt yeah. jujitsu. Black, like boxer, master, like golden yeah. glove boxer, like the whole nine. <laughs> On top of being this like, you know, connector of people and, and artists and all this stuff. Yeah. And um, 
But yeah, you're on a wild ride. And then all of a sudden he's like, look, look at the octagon. There's Bisbing. Bisbing's over here. And then, and then, and you're like, you're looking at like M huge MMA fighters, like yeah. sparring. Hey, what's up, Pat? Yeah. He'll, he'll jump on, put the gloves on, spar with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> you think about that man's life. It's fucking crazy. And he, and he made it all up. But I love that shit. I love it. It's insane. I love every second. He was driving me crazy. Yeah. Shit. I thought my head was going to pop. Yeah. But I loved every second of it. Like yeah. the challenges that he puts you through. He goes, if you don't want to do it, it's okay. It's your, at the end of the day, it's your thing. I yeah. just want you to be the best. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> you know, fucking, like, He mind fucked you. He goes, you don't want to be the best? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to do it half ass, that's cool with me. Yeah. And, and me and him and, and Sponto, I feel like we have like this fucked up thing about us. Like, it's like kind of like the, you know, the culture now where they're like, you're not downful. You yeah, know? yeah. Like, we, you, that's all you got to say. Yeah, you're not it's down. It's over. Yeah, yeah. you're not down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want to give up? Yeah. yeah you want to give up? Yeah. yeah. Like we just have that competitive shit and it's a motherfucker, you know, like yeah. to, to live like that. But I, I still love it, you know? I mean, that's how, that's how great shit gets done. I just, nothing's more than the pain when you're on a job and you really are tired, like really tired, like in yeah. your bones. Oh yeah. And you're looking at another three hours and you want to go home and quit so bad. It happens on every shoot. Yeah. There's always a point where you're like, you hit, you know, you, you now the there's no more coffee. There's no more fucking second lunch. Yeah. Nothing's going to get you there. And I've been there and you sit there and you go, I don't know if I can, <laughs> you want to just go hide in a truck and take a nap, but you're the guy. Yeah. And, uh, and everyone's coming to you for answers and you want to fucking give up. And you're like, and then you have to have that talk with yourself. Are you going to bitch out? Yeah. Of course you're not. You never have. You've never yeah. given up. I've never fucking quit on a fucking job. Yeah. Because you can't. The whole fucking thing's dependent on you. And not only can you not quit, you got to bring it home in a real way or else the whole day's a waste. Yeah. Because we're not doing it again. Yeah. It's never going to be like what it was. So that's a motherfucker, man. That, I, nothing, that feeling, that terrible, horrible feeling in your stomach when you're so far from going home and you know it and you got a few more hours in front of you and you're did 12. Yeah. It's that's the worst. I hate it so much. Yeah, and you're but, making you're trying to make some great classic shit that'll never never lose, you know? Yeah. Like through the years it'll never yeah. depreciate. Yeah. And you have all these people out there to compete with. Yes. And you're trying to, you know, you're trying to win on every level. It helps me though thinking about people like, you know, Spanto or Pat or whatever, you know, like you know, at like when you're doing that talk to yourself yeah like i'm talking to myself but he's the one i'm talking to you know shit like that like hey well you know but i just hear like a get your at you know get out there motherfucker stop playing you know he would never ever ever tap out ever yeah he would never leave anything early unless he was going to do something else he yeah have been doing oh yeah but like he would come back but he would never leave the job. Yeah. And he would never give up on the job. And he would be like, you want to do it? If you said to him, I think we need to do this other shit, I'd be like, okay, let's go. Like, he wouldn't even question it. Yeah. He'd never be like, oh, fuck it. Yeah, we got it. It's cool. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because he was obsessed with, you know, I think that, like, I've known the man for a decade, and I know him intimately, and I think that he was obsessed with, A, no one beating him. He was so, like, he'd be like, well, so-and-so's so doing, fuck that. Like, so they're doing this? I'm fucking doing it better. Like, that's how he thought about everything. Yeah. Every little fucking thing. You could be telling him about, like, sandwiches or some shit. He'd be like, oh, you know. And um, <laughs> that's that drive, man. I guess that's what makes people in companies and projects and art. And that's what makes shit great when you have that little extra 10%. Yep. Because the 80% doesn't get it, you know. And uh, it's a motherfucker, man. That that energy, his his girl's got that same, his little, his little baby... Marilyn, she has the same energy. I see it. She's like, yeah, you know, she's like ready. nonstop. Yeah, she's she's his daughter, man. Yeah. She's like, you know, fully ready, ready to go. Does, not scared of anything. Not yeah. scared of the camera. Yeah, no fear. Like the day of his service when they told her to dance, I yeah. thought any other kid would have broke down and been like, "I'm no. out of here." You know, like no. my dad just passed away. Like I'm gone. Yeah, you're not gonna have me up there dancing around and then to be like, hey. You're the one who's got to, you know, pull this, pull the service, you know, together and, and get it to the next part. And she went up there, no fear. Fearless. Did the dance. I was like, man, this is so cool. You know, like, it was amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing to see it. And it's amazing to know that that's something that is like, it's passed down, I think. Like, I, I think it's in her. 
whatever that thing is yeah and people have it or they don't like that that undominable undom i can't say the word that unstoppable energy indomitable is it is that right indomitable you can check my english indomitable that indomitable energy fact check that yeah fact check that let's get it on google google put the google on the street fighter real quick yeah um (laughs) no that that kind of energy is uh it's crazy it's it's psycho like i can't like and like you know i think that again like he funneled it into born and raised. Imagine where he was going to another place. You know, yeah. <laughs> like I, I think about that all the time. Like, imagine that dude coming after you. Like, he's just you're not because he's smart. Yeah, and he's and he's and he's got a lot of fucking like. He's very like, you know. I used to tell him he's always dodging raindrops. Right, he was always moving, yeah. politicking, keeping things. You know, this is on fire. He put that fire out. Deal with this fucking thing. Like he's yeah. always doing that nonstop. And I just imagine, imagine that dude. Imagine you're on that dude's list. <laughs> oh, terrible. You don't want to be on the wrong side of that guy. But he funneled it all towards born and raised. And uh, and this was his, like, he, this was his entire life. You know, he was like, this is every fucking day, every waking minute. was like, how do I make this better? How do we go harder? How do we get bigger? And it was never, you know, on the Levi shoot, which is the last thing I shot with him, I remember I asked him, I get, I'm all, hey, what's it like to be a success? And he wouldn't, he didn't want to admit that he was successful. Yeah, but I'm like you're objectively successful, fool. Like you're you're a success. Yeah, think about what you're starting, where you're at. This is success. He's like, it's not. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. But like, and that's also that's also something that I've suffered from too. Is like you think you're not, you can't see yourself. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. It's uh, that to me. It's like oh, I, that project's done. Yeah, like my success is right. That's true. Is in the future. You yeah. know, it's not right now. That that one's over already. That's the past and. I get I get that way too. Like people are like, "Yeah, man, you're successful." And I, it makes me think like, "Why is it? oh yeah?" Because of all the shit I've done. But then I'm like, "But you know, there's all this stuff now and tomorrow that I have to do." Right. And that that'll get me to where I think is successful. You know, but all the shit I've done right now that's gone is like I don't even think about it's it anymore. It's a rental. Anymore. Yeah. It's like, it's like you can't buy it. You're just renting it day by day, right? Yeah, it's gone. So it's like. I get I I get that what he's what he was feeling. Even the number, like everyone's like, what's your exit number? What's your number? Like I know him. If he would have got his number, it would have been like, okay, now what? Yeah, he's not gonna chill out and like fucking do yoga and shit. Like give me a break. He's gonna meditate. Are you nuts? <laughs> Guys, fucking brain was like a was a was a was a little oven. Like it was insane. Nuclear meltdown mode all the time, going a hundred miles per hour just to go down the street. It's like the oil when you put the fry bread in there. Yeah. <laughs> That was his head. <laughs> it was a hot pan of oil. Like he just put some shit in there. <laughs> Fuck. His shoes just start sizzling. Yeah, it's crazy. They don't make them like that. Um, Darius, you still on the phone? No. You guys want to come on for a minute? We're at the Born and Raised office. I'm gonna tell Darius and Ricky to pop pop on for a second and say hi because they they've been a part of this whole thing for a long time. They're going to come on here and clam up and be a little fucking hose and not speak, but I'm still going to run them on here real quick. I'm talking to you, Ricky. We're in the Born and Raised office, in case you didn't know. So, listen, this is Rick Avelli and, and, and Young Silkworm of Born and Raised. They've been with us for a very long time. Been through a lot of things. We're talking, we're talking about uh, uh, Sponto and his legacy and, and uh, you know, like, he, listen, he was a maniac and, and it's, he, he, he would not stop moving. He wouldn't stop working. And sometimes, you know, Ricky would be cuddled up with his his girl and, you know, and he'd be just about to go to sleep and Sponto would call him and be like, Ricky, I need a sticker. And Ricky would have to get out of bed and put on his fucking work clothes, fire up the computer and get to work. And that's just kind of how <laughs> how things went sometimes, <laughs> you know, the fool was out of control. Um, you guys want to say a few words? You want to introduce yourselves and, and, and tell us about why why is why is Darius flooded with ice? And I've seen more ice on his finger. We pay this guy too much, I think, or he's doing too many side hustles. You're selling, you're scamming? You're selling dope? What are you doing? I'm scamming. This is a professional scammer right here. <laughs> born and raised Rico charge. Comes <laughs> born and raised Rico case. <laughs> All against Darius. Who knew? Um, what's up, boys? How are we doing? You're going you're gonna to clam up again like we did at the barbecue? Yeah, I don't talk much, um, but... My name is Darius. I've been with the brand almost uh, like eight or nine years. Yeah. You came on after Carlos left. After Carlos, Carlos left. Carlos was, was, Carlos left us. We yeah. love you, Carlos. 
Uh, uh, and then Carlos said to us, "This is what Carlos said." I'm just, I, you know me. I just oh, like yeah, to tell the truth. That's a good story. This is a good story. Carlos goes, "Hey, hire this dude, Night Stalker." Okay, Night Stalker lives on in infamy in this company because he's one of the one. There's a, there's a few reasons why this company almost died. He's one of them. <laughs> Night Stalker. He goes, hire Night Stalker. I like him more than Darius for the job. So I said, I trust in Carlos. It's Carlos on the way out. I hire Night Stalker. <laughs> Darius is still chilling. Darius didn't get the job. We had we only had room for one employee. It was me, Sponto, and one dude. And Sponto is in the fucking hospital. He's going through chemo brain. He's like sometimes showing up and being like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot down a helicopter today. We're like, oh my God. All right. Um, but because that's chemo, the chemo brain fries your brain and makes you very dark. So just to just to you know clarify. Anyways. We hire Night Stalker on Carlos's advice. One of Night Stalker's sickest moves that he did was we're doing a collab with YG and we made these knee high socks. This is like seven years ago, right? Seven, eight years ago. Night Stalker on his own, we, we let him do the ordering. Night Stalker on his own to the order of socks adds an extra zero. So <laughs> how many how many units was it? No, there's, they're still there. We still got. We some. still have these socks. We have the pallets. If you guys want some knee high, uh, born crazy socks, <laughs> hit, hit the email. It was for the YG what my crazy life album release. Uh, born, born crazy. crazy. No, oh, that, that, that's no. what we called it. We called it that's born what we crazy. Called it, but it was for his my crazy life album, right? Am I wrong? Uh, no, it was still brazy, right? I don't know. No. Whatever. Fact check. Know. We have no Google. No, that's still brazy. Still brazy because you guys did the video for. We did a. We made some tube socks with YG. It was a collab. This motherfucker ordered so many socks that it almost almost sunk the company. And and like the wildest colors too, like red and blue, right? royal blue knee-high socks. And his rationale when we said, why did you do that? He goes, he goes, we'll just sell them. And I'm like, that's not how it works, my boy. Like, that's not how commerce works. You can't just sell shit. Like, we didn't have, like, seven years ago, we didn't have the eyes on us we have now. We couldn't move those damn socks. And let's say for sake of argument, how many, if you were to guess, how many units do you think it was of socks? I don't think that was the incident with the extra zero. That was a different incident. That was incident. a different incident? Yeah, that's when we were, uh, we had to order yardage, and I think instead of 1,800 yards, it was 18,000. <laughs> <laughs> the socks was just a gang of socks. Like, the white ones sold out, so he re-upped everything instead oh. of just... Read up well, we he almost he almost cratered the company with that move. Yeah, yeah. His logic was great. He's like, "You guys are killing it. You're going to sell." His head everything. was in the right place. But his heart, his he, heart was his in the heart, right place. His, his head was, was in the there. toilet. Yeah. Um, so nice. yeah, that that was Night Stalker. So I was told to hire Night Stalker. We call him Night Stalker because his name was Richard Ramirez. So then we called him Night Stalker. And yeah. uh, and there was also there was also an episode one day, one day back in the day. Remember when I lost my shit? Yeah, two tone blacked out. <laughs> Uh, in rage, and was just chasing him around the table, like a little kid, and he and was he just hit, tiptoeing. And he hid in the bathroom, and I and I and I thought I was gonna break the bathroom. I was so I don't know why I was so angry at him. Yeah, he did I, something. I, he did something really stupid. Like he he like smacked. He did some really part weird. Of the I think he, I think he, <laughs> he is part of the yard. I think he has smacked the phone out of your hand or something. And yeah, you just saw red, and I blacked I, out. I, I, to this day, I never seen you that mad. I blacked out. I rarely, I rarely get angry, but I, for some reason, I saw red. I blacked out, and I chased him around the office, and he barricaded himself in the bathroom. And I saw, and in my rage, I was like, "I'm gonna go right through this bathroom door because it can't be worse shit." And it, 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 it was a very strong door because I, I went full speed into that door, and I had a few extra pounds on me, and it didn't break. And I, I'm glad it didn't break because what was I gonna do? I'm gonna get in there and wash my employee? Like, yeah, that was all bad. I'm just gonna ragdoll him in the bathroom? Like, that's not my style. That's not how I get down, everybody. I just had a that's moment. Some of born born shit. Huh? <laughs> that's some real born and raised. Born raised. <laughs> Welcome to born and raised. Now you're getting your head dunked in a toilet for ordering eighteen thousand worth, eighteen thousand yards of fucking cashmere or whatever the fuck. Um, yeah. So the you know, listen. I think there's a million stories of, you know, like we we all lived in that office on MacArthur Park. It was just like disgusting um terrible the park is full of fucking ducks and, du and, and and duck shit and syringes and and uh you know on the right day when you visit it looks really beautiful they're like look at this beautiful lake and then they go on the wrong day and there's just fools fucking smoking fentanyl and t you know by the end of it when we left there's tents everywhere and it was a nightmare yeah right but we but we cooked up a lot of shit in that office man we really we really got it cracking in there and uh I know you guys. I know you guys would have some parties in there when I went home, because I stopped partying. I know that you know I would we're come back and up. find blunt guts. We're working guts. overtime. 
Yeah, I find blunt guts and henny bottles, empty henny bottles and blunt guts. No condoms, which is scary. I didn't find any old condoms, which means that you guys are either not having sex or having raw sex, which (laughs) don't do that, right? Um, Because of recent events, someone someone had a health scare recently in this office. I'm not going to say who, but guys wear condoms. Um, Sorry. Anything else? What do you? What else? What else? You want? You want to? You want to revisit some memories? What I tell you? They're going to clam up. Look at them. They don't got a word between them. It's good. Jason's over here staring at me. I'm nervous. Yeah, don't let that dude stare at you. <laughs> I definitely found some condoms at the office. You did? Dude, I found too many. Like used? Yeah. Oh, like, no. Like when we were cleaning it out, when when they were doing like the demolition. Yeah. And we had to like clear everything out. <laughs> Stuffed in the walls? Bro, they were like stuck to the ground. They were no, like no. crusty and shit. No. You remember? Uh, Are you hot right now? We saw my homie the uh, that rack that we had. You remember that? What rack? We had a rack where you had like some camera equipment or some shit. And you were going to get rid of it. Oh, and we yeah. We sold it to my homie for like 200 bucks or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was like a used fucking dried up condom hanging off the Oh, what, a na- what nasty motherfucker yeah. was in the office. Fuck something. And flinged it. And flinged yeah, the just condom. shot it. On his way out, right by the door. He <laughs> is right by the door. <laughs> he was going to take it so home. Cold. He was going to take it home. Whoever, he changed his mind. Who, I don't know who it was. We can't say. It definitely wasn't... Uh, Definitely wasn't me, somebody. And it could have been Night Stalker, could have been Justin, could have been one of the many Definitely interns. wasn't me. Definitely wasn't Darius. <clears throat> Definitely could have been Ricky. I don't use condoms. What kind of person, what kind of person <laughs> uses a condom? Was it tied in a knot? Did it have fluids in it? Dude, it had been so old. It, like, it, it, it evaporated. It fossilized. Out. Oh, it turned into a crustacean? It's like at the beginning of uh, Jurassic Park. With the mosquitoes in the amber? Yeah. That was it. That was it. <laughs> oh, that's fucking fucked up. Because you know whoever did that just like chucked it over their shoulders. Like, I'm out of here. Yes. Let someone else deal with it. In three years. Fuck. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, we had to break that office down in COVID because when COVID hit, there you couldn't have an office for a couple of years. We we're fucking, we we're cooked. The office was kind of grimy at that point. It got really, know? it like, got nasty. Well, yeah, we kind of like It go. deteriorated like... Most of the shit in that office was my stuff. It was like all of my photos, my furniture, my desks, my f- all my shit lived in that office. Like, because that's how we had to start. We didn't have we didn't have the money to buy shit. Like we just brought all our crap in there for the Patreon. <laughs> we're gonna do the rest of the interview naked per Ricky, because Ricky Ricky's all buff and shit. He wants to show off his body. Drop him, Jason. <laughs> Drop yeah, it like it's too. hot. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get new too. <laughs> Everyone, we're on the Patreon. Welcome to the Patreon. Uh, if you wait, hold on. Don't you're not here yet, but you should go to the Patreon. You need to subscribe. You need to like. I'm sorry that I've been gone for two weeks, but you know there's some fucking events in my life that made it really hard for me to get to this other job that I have, which is making the podcast. It's not really a job; it's a passion, something I love doing. But I got to tell you, life's been rough. Life's been rougher than I've had a lot of things happen this year, but this is this is like this one's so crazy and big that I'm not even like I just I'm like okay, well what. What do you do now? You just got to you just got to start moving, right? Like you just kind of uh, well, you don't have a choice. So you don't want to just go fucking, you know, I don't know. I don't have the wherewithal to go to like, you know, Palm Springs for 3 weeks and sit in a spa and 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 and, and contemplate life, which is what we should all be doing. We should have cucumbers on our eyes, <laughs> towels around our waist, mud masks, and we should sit there and just kind of chill out and, and and grieve in our own special ways, but we don't have time for that. Life is for the living and it's fucking moving nonstop. Am I wrong? Nope. Got to hit the ground ground going. Yeah, I got to hit the gas. And that's one thing that we know how to do is uh, we keep it pushing. And uh, we move at a pretty fucking brisk cadence. And that's what we're doing. Because what else are you going to do? And, uh, you know, uh, so listen, you know, we're going to go to the Patreon now. If you don't have access to the Patreon, it's $5 a month. Again, I apologize. I've been gone for two weeks. But again... Fuck it. Give me five bucks. You get to come over to the other side of the show. You get to hear the real show. Ricky's going to bust out his favorite uh, cuss words slash sex stories. Yeah. Silkworm's going to tell you where all the gold and the ice comes from because I don't fucking know. And Stefan's going to tell you some other trade secrets on how to how to get that Walmart bag because that's, that's no joke. Everyone thinks the Walmart, you know the Walmart play? Yeah. We all have gone to this point where we're like sub-brand. So sub brand that we make a three dollar t shirt in fucking Bangladesh. Yeah. Make a sub brand, send it to Walmart. They're gonna book 
I don't know, 30,000 units, right? Yeah. You're going to be rich instantly. But you forget about the part where people will get, people have to want it. Because I've been there. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a subreddit. Yeah. But then you forget, like, because you see these motherfuckers get so lucky. You see some brand where no one knows what the fuck they're doing. And all of a sudden they're like, that brand's worth $15 million in 18 months. Like, how did that happen? And you're like, I need some of that money. Because I'm over here grinding myself to a nub. And $15, 15 million is still on the horizon somewhere, right? Like, and these motherfuckers, like, you see them, and they just, like, they just tap into the fucking zeitgeist, and all of a sudden they're rich. And you're like, I could have done that. I could have yeah. put a, a squiggle on top of a fucking wiggle and dropped it on a T-shirt and printed it up and not done any work. And uh, that's just not how life works, man. You don't get to be that guy. You can't be that guy and be this guy. You can't be the guy with integrity who's plugged into the subculture and also be the guy that knows how to make fucking $20 million by putting a duck in a sailor's hat on top of a fucking log and whatever the fuck they do. I don't know. You know what I mean? That's it. Putting a cat on a t-shirt. Put a cat on a t-shirt. A cat with lasers coming out of his eyes. Here's $60 million. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> here's a yacht. You know, we take the, we've taken the long hard way, but you know, it is what it is. This is what I know how to do. I don't know how to do the other thing. Yeah. We think we can do it. We think we can pull it off. Yeah, because it we looks all, easy. We all, maybe that's something. what Darius is doing. That's why I was saying you, you think you could do it because you say, oh, I just got to do some lame shit and, some lame and I'll make millions. Yeah. And fuck being cool. Fuck being cool. But then you think like, well, maybe I'm a fucking dumbass idiot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm over here trying <laughs> to be cool, but they might be the like... I'm not getting it because they get it. Yeah, they they put the fucking duck in the hat and yeah. they, they made the shirt and it sold for twenty million. Yeah, you know what's cool? They're, they're Nothing's chilling. cooler than having they got money. The they're yacht. chilling. They're they're playing golf. Yeah, they're playing golf. They're in Palm Springs with cucumbers on their eyes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm over here in 108 degree weather, running around trying to shoot you know 20 different scenarios, grinding for the deadlines tomorrow but we just found out yesterday oh my you know? god so it's like we're over here surrounded by used condoms yes. yeah used <laughs> condoms in the condoms on top of your computer it's disgusting one day we'll get a break one day yeah sure i don't know <laughs> we get no break though. i know right nah